Hello and welcome to the What's New video for Inspect 2019. My name is Matt Hyland. I'm the General Manager here at Codeware. And today I want to go through some of the high level features that were released in our 2019 build. So in front of you, you guys are looking at what we call Build 7900. It's going to be our, our year end build. And we've got a lot of really exciting features in here that I want to go through with you. So uh, I'm just going to get right into it. So today I'm going to be going through some of the enhancements that we've made for our vessels, our piping, as well as our tanks as well. So we're going to start with the vessels. So one of the big things we put in this year is what we call the pressure versus temperature chart. Uh, and this has to do with the part three brittle fracture assessment. So I've got a metal loss set up here on this vessel. I'm going to simply right click on it and open up the metal loss. So one thing you'll notice in here, um, there's a checkbox to perform part three brittle fracture assessment. When we check this, we're automatically going to run this pressure uh, temperature curve. So if you go through the rest of the dialogue, again, this is already set up. When we do that, what we can then do is go to the report, like so. We can come down into our uh, flaw report, so our local metal loss here. Now, within this report now, you are going to see this chart. You'll see it. internal pressure versus MAT. So what is this exactly? This is a pressure versus minimum allowable temp temperature chart uh, in a table that shows the, it's going to be shown within this flaw report. Um, what this will display is the minimum allowable temperature at the different increments of internal pressure ranging from ambient pressure to design pressure. Um, a lot of the owner operators really, really value this and um, we've gotten a lot of feedback from it as well. So that's something new that's gone into um, this build. And this is going to be the same whether you're doing piping um, as well. So as soon as you check that part three uh, perform brittle fracture assessment, um, this is going to be uh, available to you in the report. Now, for the vessels, a um, couple of productivity enhancements that we've made as well. Um, uh, we've done what we call a quick design feature. So modeling these vessels have become even easier for you guys now. Um, if you guys get a chance, I did a what's new and compressed video as well that, that highlights this a little bit more. But at a very high level, um, what we can do now is activate our little quick design um, mode right here and you can start adding things. Uh, so for example, if I hit the F2 function key, that's a shortcut for a nozzle. And you can see here, I'm quickly adding a nozzle on here. I can just drag and drop it where I want. And then we've also added some more piping components. So for example, if you've got an elbow on the end of this, I'll click OK here. I want to put pipe. I can do that. I can put reducers on it, things like that. So we've given you a little bit more flexibility with the modeling. Um, as well. But again, I'd encourage you guys to go watch the What's New in the Compressed video because I go through a lot more on the modeling side on that uh, versus the post construction side that I'm doing here in our inspect program. So that's going to be available for you guys um, as well. And then, like I said, everything that's available in our Compressed program is going to be available in Spec too. So I forgot to mention that. So let's move on to the piping, um, some of the enhancement we've made here as well. So this is a pipe. Um, this is actually, a, I believe it's a discharge station um, pipe run. Uh, right here. Um, but some of the things we've added in here, and this is really handy for the uh, the inspectors in the field, is that I'm going to right click on our metal loss right here. And you may notice that we have in the top right hand corner a specified GPS location. So what you can do is actually specify where this particular flaw is on the pipe run. So uh, something small like this, we would just, you know, generally where it is. But if we have this pipe run that's modeled and it's, you know, a very long pipe run, we would want to be able to tell people where exactly to go. Is that the beginning of the line? Is that the end? Is it in the middle? Where is it? So if you click on the specify GPS location, you can specify um, whether it's in degrees, minutes, or seconds, or decimal degrees, fill it out. You can also put in elevation because, as you guys know, we usually have multiple layers. We have to look, um, you know, maybe climb to get to this pipe run, and you can specify that, and that's going to be available to you in the output report. So, again, I'll just go through this quickly. Um, the other thing, too, is we can also set it up for the equipment. So, for the mechanical um, integrity inspection, so if we're doing our API 510, our 570, our 653, we can um, open up our maintenance inspection grid here, and on the equipment details, you can also specify um, this as well. This would be a little bit uh, more useful for, say, a vessel that, you know, relatively fixed equipment or um, it's fixed. It's Most of them aren't that large, but you can place that in there. But for the pipe runs, this is really, really um, beneficial for you. So then when you come to the report, let me just run the calculations right now quickly. Quickly. 
what you'll see is when we come to the metal loss report right here, there will be a GPS location um, hyperlink. So if you click on it, and this just actually opened in my other window, so what I'll do is I'll just drag this over. It opened up Google Earth on, uh, in Chrome for me, and you can see this is the refinery. I can zoom in here, and you can say, okay, this is generally where the the pipe run is located. So if I'm planning my day, I've got to go check this pipe run before I do this one. I can say, well, hit this one first, then the one on the other side of the plant, so I can help coordinate my schedule and I don't waste my time uh, with these inspections as well. So again, it's uh, these are available for you now. You can set them up for the entire circuit, or you can set up for the individual flaws as well to tell the inspectors where to go to look. Now, one of the other things that we've done with the piping this year is we've um, opened up the export of this. So we can now export our pipe and rungs in XML 3D format. So we can bring it into programs like SolidWorks, for example. So I actually went ahead and did this um, for you guys. But here's a pipe run now native within SolidWorks. So we've also identified the flaws on the vessel um, as well. So that will come over to let you know, especially if you want to produce a drawing of this, anything like that. It's very easy to do this in a program like SolidWorks. Um, again, our, this is through our CodeWare interface, and I'll, I'll be there'll be another video for this as well. But simply under the Tools menu, go to CodeWare, select Import Model, and you can bring in that XML 3D file. And this is really handy, for example, if you want to maybe do uh, maybe some further analysis, you want to run a simulation on it. SolidWorks has a wonderful uh, simulation tool add-in that you can use for this as well. But the point here is you can get this information out of Inspect very easily, and you can transfer it across different platforms. So that's going to be available for you now as well. All right, moving on to the tank. So our 653 storage bins. So you can see here what we've done this year is we've added in the, the roofs and we've allowed for nozzles to be placed on the tank as well. Um, so let's go through and model one really, really quickly. So what I'm going to do is just go to my file menu, select new, and we're going to select the API 653 storage tank option right here. And I'm just going to use the defaults for the majority of this. Um, uh, setting up the shells, things like that. I've done other uh, videos highlighting this. I'll just go through this quickly. Click OK. So there's my my cylinders and my my floor, my liquid level in there. But to add a roof, you can do it two ways. You can come up here to the Attach menu um, and select the tank roof. Or, as I usually like to do, I usually use these little quick options um, over here on the side. And I'll select Tank Roof. So this is the tank roof dialog. Um, it's pretty simple, straightforward, but we do have some options here. For example, what type of fixed roof do we want to put on? Do we want it to be a cone? Do you want it to be a dome? So those options are there. Obviously the material, this all comes out of 653. And then the seam pattern. So you can adjust the seam pattern of your tank roof as well. And then specify the radius, nominal thickness, things like that. And you can even adjust the number of seams if you want. So you can customize this and set this up exactly how your tank roof is constructed. So once you click OK, there is the tank roof. So that's on there now. Now the other thing we did is we opened up the manway calculations uh, per 653. So we're actually running the calculations per you know, the standard. So again, hitting my F2 function key is the shortcut. And again, I just showed you that quick design, so we can just drag and drop this manway where we want. Now, a note here, if you want, if you notice in the top right-hand corner, there's that gray box. If you keep an eye right here on this on this MPS, if I scroll with my mouse wheel, you'll see I can make this manway bigger or smaller based on that. So if this is a 24-inch manway, I can just scroll to 24. I can even add a flange if I want, as well as a blind. And I can drop that nozzle roughly where it's going to be, and then I can go into the detail report afterwards, or the detail dialog, I should say, and make any fine adjustments. But the calculations are all going to be run for you as well. So that's available for you um, this year. Now, one thing you guys may notice is that I've just run uh, Section 8 pressure vessels, I've run B313 piping, and I've run 653 storage tanks in one program. So the nice thing is this is all available to you guys within one platform. You only need to learn, learn one system. You only have one install. So it's a big benefit being able to bring all of this equipment within one environment for you as well. So that's another thing that I just wanted to highlight. So those are some of the high-level features that we've introduced this year. Now, obviously, if you guys want to see a full detailed list of everything that we've done, simply come up here to the Help menu. 
Come down and select View History, and you'll get the full report of every feature we've added in, plus maintenance fixes, as well as uh, full descriptions of all of them as well. And of course, if you guys have any questions or you'd like to see another demo, anything like that, please feel free to email sales at coder.com or give us a call at 941-927-2670. Thank you very much for watching. You guys have a great day.